<clears throat> hey guys, I'm here for a very special reason today. Today is Thomas Niklaus's first birthday, or would we call it a rebirth day? One year ago today, I received word from his artist, Wendy Graham, that he was all ready, all finished, and set to come home to me. And three days after that, October 12th, 2017 he arrived to my home so uh, if you have been with my channel for any bit of time you probably know that he is sort of like the star of the show um, or he's the heart of my collection this boy kind of started it all in a lot of respects and so <laughs> um, he is the Atticus sculpt from Laura Lee Eagles, if you're not familiar with the sculpt. And he was painted, as I mentioned, by Wendy Graham. She's an artist in the UK. She's been re reborning for a lot of years now, I think like 15 years, something like that. And she's, um, I just love her style. She's quite the talented artist. And so I wanna tell his story. If you have heard his story before, then obviously please feel free to skip ahead if you would like to, but I do want to share a little bit about the journey and not just his story, but kind of in reflection, what this doll means to me in relation to the hobby and in relation to life in general, without being overly dramatic, of course. So the outfit that I'm going to place him in is the outfit that he came home to me in. And it's not only that, it's an outfit from the set of photos that he was in during his photo shoot. And not only him, but his predecessor. That's what I say, his predecessor. It may not be the perfect term. Let me explain. So maybe... 14 months ago, we'll say, might be a good guesstimate. I discovered Reborns and I started looking at them and I was initially not shopping for myself, but immediately once I started shopping for my daughter, I really felt that I needed to have one, one, one. And I really, like all I could squeeze out to spend was about $200. And I got my very first Reborn for myself. His name is Norman Walker. He was a custom doll. Um, and while I was waiting for him to be painted, I came across a photograph of a baby that took my breath away. And just sort of like stole my imagination and... I kind of like, it was one of those things where I felt sadness that how could this not be my mine? But there's absolutely like, how in the world can I make this happen? And he was, um, he was, oh, we forgot your onesie. He was up for auction on eBay, and he was the Atticus Sculpt by Laura Lee Eagles, painted by Wendy Graham. I jumped through some hoops, and I made some agreements here at home to have what the balance of funds that I would need lent to me, lent to me to make it happen. And of course, I didn't have a whole, I, I don't have a lot of patience or self-control when it comes to things that you need patience for. So with eBay, it's really best to kind of wait until the end and then throw out your offer. Um, rather than getting into these bidding wars that drive the price of the auction up. However, I needed to feel that I was winning. So every time the price went up, I would rebid. I drove the bid of this doll up well, not just me, but the others bidding on it, <clears throat> and, lo and lost. I lost in the last, you know, 10 seconds of the auction. And I was really, really, really devastated. However, before all of that went down, I had already contacted Wendy regarding 
the potential of doing a custom Atticus and the potential of doing customs in general because she also had mentioned that this kit was sold out, limited edition sold out, and she didn't have any more. So she wouldn't be able to do another Atticus. And I really like her style. Like the, the energy of her babies to me is very like timeless European. You know, like quiet Sunday rainy afternoons in the parlor and strolls in the park in the pram. You know, that's the feeling that I got and that I get from the different babies that I see photographs of that she makes, not just this sculpt. When I heard that he was sold out, I had happened to go on Laura Lee Eagle's website and there were a couple left. There were, I found a couple of kits on there and I had told Wendy and then by the time she went on, she said that they were gone. And I said, um, darn, I should have jumped on it and bought it. And then I said, and then I found them again. And she said she didn't know if she was going to need them or not until she saw how the auction went. So, when I saw them come up again, I said, you know what, I'm going to buy one. I bought one and I said, if you don't need it, I will sell it. We'll figure it out. But while I'm seeing these, I'm going to go ahead and grab one. Because they were miss. Um, filed under a different kit name too and I'm so glad that I did so it's the moment I lost the auction I contacted her and of course you know she expressed her condolences for my sadness and was happy to work with me on a custom and she knew the look that I was going for and everything and she went ahead and started a custom order for me well first I First, I shipped the kit to her, which took, oh, here's little Charlie in the background. <laughs> I shipped the kit to her, so we had to wait for that to happen. And then um, once she got the kit, she began working right away. And she did work very efficiently. I mean, it was really only a couple of weeks. I did not receive progress photos of any kind so the way that he looked is totally um a surprise to me and then he came home and he arrived home on October 12th and that moment was unbelievable so I'm going to go ahead and insert here a side-by-side -side photo of the original Atticus that I fell in love with and my Thomas Niklaus you will see he's different the haircut's different the eye position's different she didn't duplicate her baby. She just used the same, you know, the same hair color and stuff like that. And by the way, that was all voluntary. I certainly would never dream of asking an artist to duplicate their work. Not after having spent the time that I have in the community and listening to the reasoning on both sides. I just think that that's up to the artist. That's my opinion. It's up to the artist what they want to do so he is a different baby but anyway here's what they look like side by side the original Atticus and my Atticus so what was it like to see him for the first time well, to be honest, the very first thing that I remember is, um, other than the magic of having these incredibly beautiful clothes that I unwrapped and the smell of the box and the super posh box opening, which was so different from what I had experienced with the previous dolls I had brought in um, for, for myself and for my daughter, um, was his eye contact. Um, He's the first open eye baby, and well, what I call a real reborn. Um, the very first doll I brought in that left very quickly didn't give me that same experience because of the glass eyes. So, when he looked in my eyes with these, you know, German glass eyes, the depth, the 
and the entire spirit of Hadal, I'm just going to say that, um, the whole feeling of the energy of the baby that this woman has created, that this artist has created, the, the feel and everything just sort of like welled over me in that moment and also that strange phenomenon of knowing that you're looking at a doll and still feeling that you are making eye contact with something that you are connecting with something and it just completely blew me away completely blew me away and um and I was afraid to touch it. So, like, I was afraid to take... It was. It took me a long time to take the jacket off of him at first. And I put the hand mitts on him. And then I swore I was never going to do it again. Because I, I just didn't... I didn't want to break a finger off. I didn't want to, like, over-rub him and get the varnish off. And it was just really, like, nerve-wracking and awesome and special all at the same time and that magic is something that I don't think that can be recreated and I think especially when you start taking dolls apart and you have multiple I mean there's still an individual connection and an amazingness but um the first one that you really connect with that's really well done that has the right amount of realism and that is just like has that heart connection with you and the first time you see a really realistic reborn I don't think that you can duplicate that I think that you start to pick apart the art or um you know what to expect you can't replace that I don't know what to to expect aspect so I would scrub my hands before I ever touched him and then I would only like hold him in his blanket and it was really <laughs> precarious I guess you would say and then this guy actually has gone on a journey um he did go back to Wendy because I did have her adjust his hairline a little bit to bring it down and it really gave him that little boy look that I felt that was like the missing piece. His hairline, his bangs were shorter um, than what I had envisioned, but she was able to fix it. And then at that time, we did a little touch up with the varnish. And, you know, since he was over there, and then he came back to me. So I had a second homecoming with him. But he is definitely my special, special guy. And it might seem funny to say, but it's kind of a big deal to have a baby for a year when you have gotten into the habit of, you know, buying and selling and things like that. So, I'm going to turn him, see how we can do with the lighting this way. I really want you to be able to see his face. So here's a little bit of a different angle. I love this sculpt. There's, it really embodies a lot of different looks depending on the angle. So anyway, we were wishing a very happy birthday or reborn day to Thomas Niklaus. And the story behind his name, by the way, Thomas was his given name from his artist, Wendy, and that is the name for the character that she created for this baby. And then Niklaus was the name that I selected for him. And he was named after Niklaus from the originals. Niklaus's character is um, the one of the he is one of the original vampires in all of history in this storyline. Niklaus Michelson, and I picked that name for him. He's fair-haired, and and I love vampires, and he just sort of has that deep, pensive, quiet look that really could go a lot of different ways as he grows up. So. 
So we flip the light on just for a moment, just to bring in a little bit of a different lighting since we were playing with the shadows so much. You can see a little bit of his rosy cheeks. He's a very fair haired boy. And he is definitely a baby that I foresee keeping in my collection for life. Yeah. I definitely even if even if I get to a point where I don't interact with my dolls, he will be he will he will remain for display and things like that. And I love him in this outfit, so he's back in it today to celebrate. He's gorgeous. And I can't believe you guys that it's been a year. It, it's it's really incredible that it's been that long already. And I started on on YouTube, of course, in the community before he came, before I even knew I was getting him. So it's just pretty amazing to think about everything that's happened. And I'm really, really glad to have had him for that long and to have a day to really think about and celebrate him. And I've been waiting for this day to get this outfit back on him. It is my favorite, favorite outfit for him of all time. And it's the one that always represents the energy of this baby to me. So thank you guys so much for coming by to see him. I wish him one more time. Happy birthday. I'd love to hear about if you've celebrated one year with any of your babies. And if you celebrated or if it brought back memories or reflections for you. That would be really cool. We are sending out heaps and heaps of love to you. Hope everything is gorgeous there where you are. And, um, and I definitely look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't subscribed to my channel. And um, we'll be sure to be putting out plenty more videos soon, I am sure, with this little fellow and all my other babies. All right. Thank you, guys, and bye for now.